We think the business cycle peaks sometime in 20, end of 2025. And that would suggest a crazy sort of target that could get somewhere between half a million and a million dollars in Bitcoin. Do I expect that? Probably not. But who the hell knows, right? These cycles can be crazy. And this one feels more like the 2017, 16, 17 cycle than it does the prior cycle. And that cycle didn't have a lot of central bank printing. Well, not in the US, but central bank balance sheets were rising. We saw 20% growth and what happened of liquidity and what happened was crypto absolutely exploded. I care about secular trends. Secular cycles, when you get them and capture them in the right point of the business cycle, become explosive. Remember that chart of the NASDAQ, the beach ball underwater exploding above the water because the Fed just took the foot off the gas pedal or the brake, sorry? That's the power of a secular trend. It outperforms any other trend and it's more calibrated to financial conditions. It's more juiced by the business cycle than anything else. These are the things that matter to me. And there's two massive secular trends that dwarf all others. Crypto. Here's the chart, the long-term chart of Bitcoin since 2013. Some people use this chart longer term. I used to. But the early cycle was so kind of ridiculous that it screws up the chart. Other than that, it's actually a perfect log trend. These cycles can be crazy. And this one feels more like the 2017, 16, 17 cycle than it does the prior cycle. And that cycle didn't have a lot of central bank printing. Well, not in the US, but the central bank balance sheets were rising. We saw 20% growth and what happened of liquidity and what happened was crypto absolutely exploded. I kind of feel like that's the case. I don't focus on the end target. I fo focus on the structure, but I'm just showing you the magnitude of the opportunity and we're still at one standard deviation oversold. It's all to play for. We've barely started. NASDAQ, another beautiful logarithmic trend. I mean, this is a killer. It's all you need to know. Is the world going to be more digital tomorrow than it is today? Yes. Will it be more digital in two years' time than it is today? Yes. Will technology reach more adoption in the coming two years? Yes or no? Yes. I ran that poll on Twitter, 95% of people agree with me, yet most people keep missing this trend. They don't want to believe it. It's expensive. I think it's a bubble. Blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, best fucking trend you've ever seen. So just capture the trend. It suggests the NASDAQ somewhere between 25 and 30,000 at the end of this cycle. That's another great set of returns. So those are the two mega trends. How do they compare? Well, simply put, Going back to 1990, kind of the dawn of the internet and computing ages, the NASDAQ has just relentlessly outperformed. All of the noise you see on Twitter, oh, I mean reverting, the NASDAQ's expensive, blah, 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 blah. It is the biggest trend you've ever been given. And many of us in macro land didn't see this. We kept fighting it because of what happened in 2000, the bubble and bust. But that, as you can see, was extraordinary. The rest, super smooth. It's the same log trend, and I don't see that changing. Could we create another bubble based on AI in the exponential age? Sure. Let's make some bloody money from it, as George Soros would say, but I don't see any elements of a bubble. It's just a normal trend that eats all other equity sectors alive. There is no point owning other stocks. Every other bet is suboptimal in this world where everything is correlated. I talked about the fact that the ISM is a repeating cycle since 2008 because of the debt refi cycle. So future ISM looks like past ISM inverted. So it suggests that we keep going into 2025, the end of 2025, which I've shown you in a number of different formats. And with that goes liquidity. I showed charts earlier how liquidity and ISM all go hand in hand. There's the chart of global liquidity and the NASDAQ just keeps going up. What a beautiful chart. That's the trend we're trading here. It's easy. Same with Bitcoin. The reason the Bitcoin correlation is actually lower than the NASDAQ is because of these super spikes on the upside, because it's so skewed to the right tail, which is amazing. So now when we put this all together, we can actually forecast using a number of proprietary things we use at GMI 
out into the future. Please do not expect this to be a crystal ball. Do not expect these exact targets. It's directionally going to give you an idea of what the next two years look like. It gives you that target that we talked about before of about 21,500 in the NASDAQ by May or June of next year. With Bitcoin, it gets even more interesting. You see, that gives us it gives us a kind of extraordinary set of numbers, which make me think that these are overstating it. So I'm just going to assume that we'd halve these. Maybe they're right. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. The everything code is new. Yes, it's worked in the past, but who knows? Because it gives us crazy numbers, like 218,000 by May. That's post-halving, post-ETF. It would give you a target of half a million bucks by 2026, which is in line with the log trend. So it's possible doesn't feel like the most probable outcome. Feels a bit ludicrous to me. But anyway, directionally, half the numbers. Assume Raoul is a total moron, which certainly my wife would do. Um, then you still get great numbers. So it's all to play for. And that makes me interested. Now, Bitcoin's actually not the horse I'm going to back in this race. Crypto is the horse I back the most. It's the fastest horse in the race. Best risk adjusted returns. High correlation to this global liquidity index, which is our everything code. So we know how the asset price behaves, which gives us a competitive advantage when we use our proprietary frameworks. Beautiful chart here, FedNet liquidity and Ethereum. Bitcoin has actually outperformed FedNet liquidity, the beach ball underwater. Why? Because of the narrative around the ETF. In macro crypto spring, Bitcoin always outperforms, much like in macro spring, treasuries tend to outperform credit. Later, when we move to macro summer, Alts, ETH first, Solana, others will start to massively outperform Bitcoin, much like junk bonds outperform um, treasuries. So ETH is just doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it's not giving us the big surprise. I think that surprise comes the moment the ETF is out in Bitcoin and people will focus on the ETH ETF and it'll bring the ETH ecosystem alive. It's This year, it's been a story of Solana, which I've been along all year, um, and um, Bitcoin, that barbell has been the best trade in the world. Or well, in fact, just owning Solana has been the best trade in the world, bar none. Um, but ETH, it'll play catch up. It'll do well. What I actually think about this is I think the opportunity here is the space is two, two and a half trillion today. I think it's going to a hundred trillion in line with other asset classes. So that's a, that's the biggest macro trade of all time and the largest generation of wealth in all human history. That's the trade. How you want to slice and dice that? Yeah, how you want to slice and dice that? It's up to you. What risk tolerance you have, but that's the trade. Um, you know, when I first did the first piece of work on Bitcoin back in 2013, I said it was worth a million bucks. Yeah. Um, you know, and I don't think that's wildly yeah, really wrong. Yeah. You know, if Bitcoin's at a million, yeah, the space is somewhere close to my target of 100 trillion, or maybe it's 50 trillion. It doesn't matter. It's just yeah. gigantic. I mean, um, you know, I know, as Dan does, a lot of macro people have moved almost entirely into this space. I don't know. Not a lot. I mean, well, there's, I a few, there's a few, but none of those people trade. Literally none of them. Except and, Novo. Except Novo. It's like, you know, that. Uh, what? No, uh, well, he said he needs his hits. He needs his hits. But, you know, speaking to another guy who's very, very <laughs> famous in the space, Oh, not in the space, but just as one of the greatest traders of all time. I mean, he's like, oh, fuck that. I never trade this stuff.